guys it is danny and welcome to this updated video on the tropics and so guys we're going to be talking about the north atlantic basin so we do have a new disturbance that is located off the southeastern coast of the u.s and we also have that saharan dust sort of blanketing the main development region and the caribbean and so guys we're going to be talking about all of that what's the chances of us having a new tropical or subtropical cyclone developing very soon and so guys before i go into details Okay, and so first up, let us take a look at the general view across the North Atlantic Basin. So we're seeing here that we're not seeing much going on. We do have that frontal system uh, in the vicinity uh, just off the east coast of the U.S. And we do have some convection out in the Atlantic. And actually, we had a lot more yesterday, but it's all been dissipated due to the Saharan dust. And so let us go on to that Saharan dust map now. And so we're seeing here that we have quite a bit that is moving across the Caribbean and a lot being out in the main development region especially further east uh, going to just off the coast of Africa right there but a bit south of it there we have that shower and thunderstorm activity but once it moves into that unfavorable region those conditions will be preventing any sorts of development from trying to take place here guys and so when we have the Saharan dust it induces dry conditions and tropical cyclones need moisture along with heat in order to develop and intensify and so with that being lacking, we're not going to be having any sort of development taking place. It is very unlikely for us to have development with such a large amount or dense amount of Saharan dust moving across the region. And so guys, we can expect this to last um, most likely throughout this month, but maybe things can be a bit less with the dust uh, as we're going to be heading into August. Because usually as we approach the peak of the hurricane season, conditions generally get more and more favorable. And so this is usually the time of year we do have the Saharan dust making its way across the region and suppressing tropical activity guys and so now let us actually move on to that tropical disturbance of the US and so there we have it so at this time the National Hurricane Center is designating it a 20% chance of developing so along with that frontal system that I showed you earlier the lower end of it the tail of it is going to be merging off the southeastern coast probably by the end part of this week guys and so that is when we could have some development taking place. The Saharan dust doesn't really affect the east coast of the U.S. It's usually the Caribbean, most of the main development region, and the Gulf Coast. But usually some might make its way up there. But once uh, we do not have much interfering and we have some favorable shear, that is going to be helping to induce the system here to develop. Hence, its chance as of right now, guys. So, so guys, it is possible that we could have some sorts of development taking place with this system. And it's going to be meandering, so there's no set track of where it is going to go. But one thing for sure is that if it does develop, it is not expected to be a very strong tropical or subtropical cyclone and so now guys let us go on and see how the wind shear is how the ocean temperatures are and we're also going to be taking a look at two of our models and so first up let us take a look at the wind shear map and so we're seeing here that just off the southeastern u.s we're seeing those greens and yellows and also the reds too uh the reds mean that the wind shear is unfavorable that is what prevents tropical activity uh, we have the the yellows mean in neutral which means that it won't really affect our systems much and then the greens mean in favorable which means that there is really no impact on tropical cyclones that are trying to develop guys and so we do have a bit of favorable in neutral shear uh, just off the southeastern u.s especially in that region of uh, florida as well as just off georgia right there so when we have that disturbance moving off if we're going to be having this year staying favorable, then it is likely that we could have a development of a subtropical cyclone. And again, the next name to be used for this hurricane season is Fred. And so in terms of the ocean temperature map, so we're seeing here that uh, the warmest section right now in terms of the main development region is the Gulf of Mexico and the Northwestern Caribbean. We're seeing a lot of 30 degrees right there. So if we're going to be heading later down into the season with these types of ocean temperatures and then the wind shear is favorable, the ocean temperatures are conducive, then it is likely that we could have some rapid intensification. We know the Gulf as a hotspot for quite a few systems that have rapidly intensified like Laura, Har 
Harvey, Michael. So we really are going to be having to pay attention to the Gulf as we're going to be heading into the peak of this hurricane season because these ocean temperatures would really aid in rapid intensification of our tropical cyclones that might develop there. And so in terms of the rest of the main development region, not very, very favorable. But of course, as we head uh, into next month as well as September, things are likely to look a lot different than they do now. And so guys, in terms of that disturbance, not designated as an invest just yet, uh, let us go on to the Euro and the GFS and see what they're expecting in terms of it. So first off, let's talk about Euro. And so this is Sunday the 25th and there we have uh, those black lines which are called the isobars and they're lines of equal pressure. And so the closer you see them in a circular manner with the pressure below 1030 millibars, that is a low pressure system and can be our tropical cyclones. And so take a look at that just off the southeastern US. So we do have the isobars, just one or two right there coming together a bit, but that could even be a weak subtropical cyclone or a depression. So fortunately, this thing here is expected to be offshore, which means that it's not really going to be affecting anywhere. And then let's take a look at what GFS is predicting. So this is Friday the 23rd of July and so there we have a 1060 millibar system not really a low pressure system at that point and then as we go further down to Saturday we see that we have a 1012 millibar low but we're not seeing much organization we're not seeing the isobars really coming together and so guys we really have to wait and see what's, what the outcome is going to be for the system again it is a newly identified disturbance and that low pressure area has not yet even emerged of the US so we have to wait and see what's going to be happening so most likely by the end of this week we could have some development taking place it's something else to make mention of so the saharan dust is in fact blanket in the caribbean which is the main area affected by this i just want to let you know that there are health hazards when it comes on to the dust so if you're in the caribbean you can experience some symptoms such as sneezing runny or stuffy nose red itchy or teary eyes uh, coughing or even wheezing and shortness of breath. So guys, try to stay indoors as much as possible. Try to stay cool and hydrated so that you don't experience these uh, symptoms when it comes on to the Saharan dust. And so guys, that is really it for this update video on the tropics. Again, we do have the Saharan dust mainly blanketing the main development region, suppressing activity by preventing any sorts of convection or inhibiting moisture. And then we also have that disturbance of the southeastern coast of the US at this time give it a low chance of development but once favorable conditions are going to be persistent we are definitely going to be having the chance rising for us to have development that is it for this update and if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be weatherwise.